I was a qualified engineer. In the middle of the building boom, my kids were on milk tokens. <laughs> There were 3,200 trade unionists placed on this blacklist. Only 300 cases have gone to court. Anyone who's ever been prominent in the trade union movement should get in touch with the Information Commissioner's Office to find out whether their file has been kept. It appeared on the blacklist following me being a shop shooter in the year 2000. If I ever became the safety rep, within literally one or two days I'd be dismissed. My list starts in 2002 when I was a safety rep. I'm sorry, shit, we've got to say it, shit, why is that shit, shit, you're good, you're good. Lem McCluskey turned man and said any means necessary, including civil disobedience. But we've given civil disobedience. We've given civil disobedience. I had a serious run-in with this firm moment. I was elected safety rep and uh, shop steward. And a friend of mine and myself, we were, uh, the firm tried to sack us about five times and we, uh, we were assaulted. I worked on the Jubilee line, but just over here, there was 700 electricians. The only strike that we actually took part in was a health and safety issue. When the job was over, everyone became blacklisted. The construction industry, year on year on, is the most dangerous place you can work. No one's standing up and interfering with multi-million pound projects. What the hell is the point of having a trade union if you can't stop, you know, bumping employers, killing and making us? So that was always our major motivation. Let's make it safe. I've been lucky, I've managed to carry on contracting self-employed. But we know people who can't get any job at all, and it's blighted their whole career. I was sent a file from the Information Commissioner's Office, and it says on there that I'm militant, uh, organised workers to go on strike at the drop of a hat for no reason, and it forced me to leave the construction industry because I couldn't get any work at all. There was things about my father, about what union he was in, and when he died, there was details of the vehicles that I drove in, meetings that I attended, things that I said to people, telephone calls that I'd made, demonstrations I'd been on. We started in the Lynx home site, September 85. Everything was going OK. The subcontractor was quite happy with we working and everything else they told us. Then one day he just came up and said, I'm sorry, I said, Langs have told me, I have to sack you. I said, why is that? I said, said, you're union men. So we put a pick in the job. Stop that job. Stop the eight sites in London and seriously upset production in about another 14. Eventually we were told that we could start back in the, the Langs job and the message was passed out to me by a, a full-time trade union official that there's no way Higgins or any of the rest of you will ever work in the Langs site in the building industry, ever. There's myself, Steve Aitchison, and yet here's this poor chap got a square on his face and he's highlighted and that was one of our branch members, Ray, who met Matt, Matt. Matt. Yeah. who's now gone working for just purely for himself because he couldn't get work anywhere. I've got the TUC Thomas Le Lasbowski, Polish Solidarity Union official, acting for the Polish immigrant workers. He's now visiting sites under my tutelage, according to this. And I've never met the chap in my life. The best publicity I got was when the company took me to the Royal Courts of Justice under the anti-terrorist laws. A union activist, not a terrorist. An energy giant that tried to use the Terrorism Act to stop a demonstration outside a power plant has been told by a judge that claims protesters were a security threat were fanciful to the point of paranoia. You could go back to 72 when there was a national building workers strike in this country. That went on for some time and eventually, after it had been resolved, about six months later, the building workers sent to prison over that dispute. Certainly the major construction companies conspired for revenge then and I believe they've been doing that 
ever since. I got six years. <laughs> Desi Warren got nine years. And the other lads got three and whatever. OK, they were reduced on appeal to three and two. But what a bloody farce. We're here now asking for justice. Desi got a terrible time. They gave him tranquilizers. And, well, a cocktail, I think. They, they used to call it liquid cough. Effectively, injected him with Parkinson's disease. Yes. He never worked after he come out of jail. He was a bloody shell. He was finished. He destroyed him. And I'll never forget the courage that that lad had. I couldn't even get to see the guys when I came down here. I had to meet them outside the gate where we had a demo. The union members that I recruited all got moved on. Uh, there was a bit of union busting going on as well. We approached the company with that. It went into denial, of course, but we know it's happened. And uh, at the end of the day, Crossrail don't want a unionised, organised project. We're health and safety reps. We've got the list of uh, some 37 names mentioned in the consultant's uh, the Consultancy Association documents, 18 of them, 18 of them, are now working for contractors in Crossrail. And we give formal notice today that we're going to blacklist the blacklisters. These 18 names, we're going to pursue their companies that they're working for, and we're going to pursue them individually. <laughs> There's an award ceremony going on today at the Lancaster London Hotel. One of the companies up for an award today, IKEA Construction. One of the companies involved with Crossrail and a company which is known as Blacklisting. And we're sending out a clear message to all those involved in construction and in particular to the Crossrail Construction Project. The United Union is launching a campaign to put an end to Blacklisting, to put an end to union busting and to get union members back to work in the construction industry. The Crossrail project is a 15 billion public money project. Your money is paying for that company to blacklist, to union bust, and to ruin people's lives. It should be outlawed. It should be legislated. It's illegal to blacklist. It's wrong. It's wrong. You know it's wrong. Stop doing it. <laughs> 
It ruins people's lives. It hasn't ruined your life, does it? Our members can't get work. Go on, choke on your dinners. It's just a member of my staff is in Leicester is getting an award. I promise not to eat or drink if I can go and say hello to her and come back. I won't stay for the dinner. case of phone hacking that you can go to jail for two years for, for hacking somebody's phone. But in the case of blacklisting, not only is there no criminal penalty, there is no imprisonment and there is no sanction. We've also just found out that um, loads of environmental activists, as well as construction workers, uh, are on this blacklist. I mean, our third runway campaign, one of our key coordinators tried to go to America a few months ago, John Stewart, wasn't allowed in the country wasn't allowed in the country, not because he just committed any crime or anything like that, but we now discover he was on the blacklist. In 1990, I was sued by the McDonald's Corporation over a leaflet that, that criticised their business practices around um, the promotion of unhealthy food and exploitation of workers and being anti-trade unions uh, and environmental damage. Um, and it turned into the longest case in English legal history. During the trial it emerged that McDonald's had got information from the Economic League and from Special Branch, including people's personal details and home addresses, um, and in some cases false information was passed on. It also emerged that McDonald's had had uh, seven private investigators infiltrate in our group during the course of our meetings that had, like, I don't know, between 10 and 20 people. The Information Commissioner knew the names the Information Commission actually had the national insurance numbers, actually, of virtually everybody on that list. And yet, they had not taken a single step to actually contact him, people and say, you've been victims. There are individuals um, that have been told by the ICO that they have got <coughs> no file, when in fact the ICO are in possession of a full file relating to them. Only 5 to 10 percent of the material which was found in the Joint Witch offices in 2009 was removed. They seized a computer from Inca. They never ever analyzed it. But they did worse than that. They gave it back to him. <laughs> there is union collusion and there is full time officers at school being paid by this union. Yeah. It's doing it. It's a nomadic industry. They must have travelled a bit all over the place. So how do you keep tabs on them? It's very difficult. And we knew that they could not be operating the blacklist successfully with the collaboration of some full-time trade union. We knew it. I want to make an apology. That's an apology for the way that you have been betrayed by the state, by the courts, by the Information Commissioner's Office, by the political parties, all of them, by the police and by the media. All of them, all of the institutions of our state have utterly failed you. And I am utterly ashamed to be part of a state which has allowed this to happen. I appreciate that. The protest. Okay. You may be protesting. I will facilitate, facilitate a lawful protest. At the moment, you're obstructing the highway. So can you move out the road, please? Or you will be arrested for obstructing the highway. This is Francis' legacy.
this is the uh, Select Committee report into blacklisting. It was published yesterday. Um, exposes everything that the big construction companies were getting up to. Sir Robert McAlpine were instrumental in the setting up the databases and the, the funding of the origin of the Consultant Association. And now Robert McAlpine faced the uncomfortable prospect of having to have a high court conspiracy trial. <laughs> I'd heard through the media about blacklisting in construction and it was also lobbied by colleagues in the unions and uh, colleagues in the Labour Party. I consulted my colleagues and, and uh, took the initiative of actually drafting a motion based on um, something that they did at Knowsley, Knowsley Borough Council, uh, which came from the GMB union. We wanted to change the tendering process to tighten it up so that uh, companies coming to us for work had to state that they weren't using blacklisting. At the March for Council, it received unanimous support from all councillors of all parties. I believe the Hull did that before we did, and uh, Plymouth City Council, their leader, contacted me after he heard about what, what we'd done, and I believe that they've also put something through their council in motion uh, fairly recently as well. Around the country, local authorities, in Tower Amulets, in Hull, the Welsh Assembly, in Knowsley, all around the country, are passing motions at the full council <coughs> meetings saying no, no publicly funded contracts will be given by this local authority to any blacklisting firm. The way we hit them is in their pockets. The clear thing you do is not just threaten strike action. If strike action is necessary, it's just that our lads walking off the set. We need to bring an end to this plight of our members. Decent lads, you know, all of them, every single one, doing what the union expects them to do, to organise in the workplace. To put a stop to that. The black mission need to put a stop to their bloody production. They stop us working, we stop their producing. We ain't stopping. We're going to fight this blacklist. We're not going away. Our trade unionists deserve to be on building sites representing workers. <laughs> faces because they're scared stiff of collective bargaining. When Thatcher came to power in 1979, 80% of workers in Britain were covered by a collective agreement. The latest figures gives us now 23%. And when you compare that to the rest of Europe, where the average collective bargaining coverage is around uh, 70 or 80%, you see what a country we've become. They can tell us that blacklisting's finished, but when they're still sacking people on Crossrail, blacklisting hasn't finished. It's still going on. And that's the big battle that I think we've got to fight at the moment. Fred was actually abused by one of the security guards. I've actually asked Crossrail to have him removed because uh, it was quite vicious to me this morning. It actually threatened to punch me, actually threatened to find me come and get me so um, it's not the kind of security guards you should have on these companies you know they're um, they're just rent a mob to be honest until he was illegally sacked from the job for being a trade union activist yesterday he was assaulted by your goons we're here to tell you enough's enough you can't sack our members you can't blacklist our members and you certainly do not beat our members up no justice no peace no justice no peace no justice no peace no justice no peace One person, you won't pick on a group of people, not so big and clever now, are you? Shame on you! We intend to make Kia absolutely toxic so no one goes near them, so that they get no contracts, no one wants to invite them to any dues. Every time we see a Kia, we're going to be there. And if it takes four years, we will do it. Okay, we're going to end blacklisting. 17 out of 38 of the named blacklisters are still working for Crossrail.
project is a blacklister. He's up to his neck in illegal sacking and barring from work and trade union activists. What do we want? Justice! What do we want? No! What do we want? Justice! Justice. What do we want? Frank reinstated as a union rep. We want union reps and health and safety reps on all sites on Crossrail. Until that happens, we will be standing outside every contractor, every company that works on Crossrail. Nothing changes. Just because of morality, things change because human beings protest. We got rid of slavery because we protested. We got the vote because the Chartists and the suffragettes protested. We got rid of apartheid because of Casato and the ANC. And we will get rid of blacklisting. Yeah.